In this video, we are going to learn how to estimate motion between video frames. Specifically, we will talk about how we perceive motion and how to estimate motion using a technique called optical flow. There are three algorithms we can use to implement optical flow using the computer vision system toolbox, namely the Horn Chung method, the Farn Back method, and the Lucas Canade method. We will use the example of a robot boat moving through a field of buoys and try to estimate if the boat is moving to its left or right. We will use only the camera video frames to determine this by estimating the motion of the objects in the environment. Before we detect motion, let's look at how motion in images is perceived. For example, if we have a structure like a line, Assume that in the image we can only see a part of the object inside the circle at a time. We will not be able to recognize all the motion components in this circle. In this case here, the motion component parallel to the line or the horizontal line cannot be inferred. Only the vertical will be. In the next case, we cannot infer the vertical movement, but only the horizontal movement. In the third case, because of the existence of a corner, we can infer both horizontal and vertical movement. This is called the aperture problem. Let's go to MATLAB for another example. Right click on motionperception.m and run it. If we look at a rotating uniquely colored sphere, we will recognize movement However, if we look at a rotating uniformly colored sphere, we will not recognize any movement. Let's go back to the presentation. Motion estimation methods return motion vectors and it is important to interpret them correctly. We see them in this table. Arrows going inwards mean the motion is backward. Arrows going outward means the motion is forward. Apart from this, arrows to the left, right, top and bottom refer to likewise motions. One way to compute the motion vectors is to use the optical flow technique. Given a sequence of gray scale images, we assume that the intensity structures of an object are constant over time, at least between immediate frames. Here we have two frames where the object has moved in frame 2. This is called gray value constancy assumption. This results in the optical flow constraint equation as can be seen here. In this equation, Ix, Iy and It are image gradients. Image gradients are used to compute the directional change in intensity or color. Ix and Iy are spatial brightness gradients of frame 1. Ix shows the vertical edges in the image and Iy shows the horizontal edges in the image. It is the temporal brightness derivative between frames 1 and 2. Both the spatial and temporal gradients are obtained using different types of image filters. The filters used vary with respect to each of the optical flow method. U and V in the equation are the flow vectors that we are ultimately interested in the formula states that if we apply the flow vectors to the spatial gradients of an image, it will be cancelled by the temporal gradient. As we saw in the introduction, there are several optical flow methods available. These can be broadly classified into dense flow and sparse flow techniques. In dense flow methods, we process the entire image and hence all the pixels. In sparse flow methods, we process only a part of the image or a subset of pixels. Consequentially, the dense flow methods tend to be more accurate but could be computationally intensive. Sparse flow methods could be computationally fast but could be less accurate. The horn shunk and farn back methods are dense flow methods. Lucas Canade is a sparse flow method. Please note that regardless of the type of optical flow methods used, all these algorithms use intensity images to estimate motion. 
let's first take a look at the Hornshung method and see how to perform optical flow. This method attempts to solve the general optical flow constraint equation for the motion vectors u and v. Apart from the already stated optical flow problem, the method has an extra global smoothness assumption, according to which all the pixels between consecutive frames move similarly. If we have two image frames, the horn shrink method uses a Sobel filter to calculate the spatial gradients and a difference filter to calculate the temporal gradient. After this, the method iteratively solves for u and v our optical flow vectors. We can apply this using the optical flow HS object. Then we call estimate flow on the object with the image as an argument to estimate the optical flow. The resulting flow field is also an object that stores the direction and speed of one video frame to another. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how we can use this. Open the starter script estimate motion optical flow underscore start. In this script, we have already been provided with starter code and comments that will help us develop our algorithm. We see the video file reader system object that has been set up to read the file buimotion.avi. We can take a look at this file in the current folder here. Right click on this file and open it outside MATLAB. This is the video we will be analyzing to detect if the robot boat is moving towards the right or left. Let's go back to the script. Note that we are reading the video frames as an intensity frame. Now let's set up the optical flow. To use the Hornshung method, we will use optical flow HS object. This is the first step. To apply this on our video frames, let's use a while loop as before. We will read in a video frame. Then to obtain the optical flow field, we will use the estimate flow function on the optical flow HS object with the current frame or the image as an argument. Flow field is an optical flow object that stores the direction and speed of all the pixels of the current frame with respect to the previous frame. We can now visualize the result of the optical flow using the plot command which automatically takes in this object as an input. For this particular type of input, we can specify additional properties to the plot command to control the visualization. Decimation factor controls the downsampling of the vectors so that we can obtain a less cluttered plot. By default, this is a 1 by 2 vector 1 1. We can increase this to 10 10 to get a less cluttered plot. Scale factor controls the length of the displayed vectors. By default, this is 1. We can increase this to 50 to see longer vectors. After this, let's set an appropriate title and then use the draw now command to update our figure instantaneously for our iterations. Let's run this code. We see the quivers or arrows appear on our plot showing the motion field. If it was a single object moving against a static background, we would be able to get a sense for what kind of motion is depicted by our video frames. In our example, however, the entire scene is moving, so it is more challenging to see from the motion field what kind of motion is depicted in the video frames. Let's zoom in to the figure. We see the quivers that represent the motion field. Let's go back to MATLAB. Here we see that flow field is an optical flow object. Let's double click on it to explore it. This contains information for all the pixels in the frame. Properties such as the velocities in the x and y direction, orientation and magnitude that has been represented in the figure that we just saw. 
the velocities in the x and y direction are measured in pixels per frame. Recall that our final goal is to determine if the boat is moving towards the right or the left. To do this, let's go back to our script. To determine if the boat is moving towards the right or left, we need only the velocity component in the x or the horizontal direction. We can then compare this to an upper threshold to look at only a subset of vectors that are greater than this threshold value to determine the objects moving to the right side. So by setting this threshold to a value of 1, we are computing all the pixels that have moved towards the right by one pixel between frames. Similarly, we can compare this to a lower threshold to look at only a subset of vectors that are lower than this value to determine the objects moving to the left side. The resulting logical matrices are just black and white images which can be viewed using IMSHOW. Let's also set an appropriate title to these images. Let's run this code. We see only black images here. We are supposed to see the objects moving to the right or left. We are unable to see this because we have not properly tuned our optical flow algorithm. For example, in this case, let's go back to the script. We are using the Hansheng method here. This algorithm has a smoothness property that can be tuned. Let's access this using the dot operator. This is set to a value of 1 by default. We can increase this to detect larger movements. In our case, the video looks fairly smooth, so let's decrease it to detect smaller or smoother movements. So let's set it to a value of 0.1. Let's run this code. Now we can see the two new black and white images. The image here highlights the objects moving towards the left and the image here highlights the objects moving towards the right. With this information, we can determine if our robot is moving to the right or left. If we detect more pixels moving towards the left, or in other words, if we detect more white pixels in this image, our robot is moving towards the right. Similarly, if we detect more pixels moving towards the right, or in other words, more white pixels in this image, our robot is moving towards the left. We can determine the number of pixels moving towards the right or left by counting the number of white pixels in each of these images. Our white pixels are the number of non-zero elements in our black and white images. To compute this, we can use the nnz function. Let's go back to our script. So for left motion, we compute the number of non-zero elements in the objects to right image. And for the right motion, we compute the number of non-zero elements in the objects to left image. To determine if our robot is moving to the left or right, we can do a comparison between the two white pixel counts. If the robot left motion is greater than the robot right motion, we can set a string to a value moving to left, else we can set the string to a value moving to right. Using this, we can visualize the result by inserting the text on our video frame at a fixed location and a large font and then display it using IMSHOW. Let's set an appropriate title for this image as well. Let's run the script. Now we see the video and the text showing us the direction of motion. When we compare the black and white images, we can see that whenever there are more white pixels in this image, the robot is moving towards the right. Whenever there are more pixels in this image, the robot is moving towards the left. 
Let's go back to the presentation. We talked about the Horn-Schrung method. We discussed the smoothness parameter. Please refer to the documentation link in the resources section to get a full list of parameters supported for this algorithm. In our example, we decreased it to detect smoother movements. We can increase this to detect larger motion between consecutive frames, but this also slows down the computation because now the search space is bigger. If we expect the displacement of pixels between the consecutive frames to be large, we can use the farm back method instead. The farm back method also solves for the optical flow constraint equation. It does this by constructing an image pyramid with n levels where n can be specified by the user. Each level has a lower resolution compared to the previous level. The algorithm can track points at multiple levels of resolution starting at the lowest level. Increasing the number of pyramid levels enables the algorithm to handle larger displacements of points between frames. However, the number of computations also increases. We can implement this in the computer vision system toolbox using the optical flow farm back object. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how we can do this. In the script we developed, let's go back to setting up the optical flow comment the code for the horn chunk method. Instead, we will create the object using the farm back algorithm with the optical flow farm back object. Let's run the script. We can see the motion estimation. The boat is moving to the right first. Notice also the denser field as a result of the farm back algorithm. It is best suited to detect large displacements, so even the smooth, smaller movements between our video frames result in an amplified optical flow field. The algorithm by default uses three levels of pyramid that we just discussed. This can be changed, so let's go back to our script. Let's use the dot notation again to set the number of pyramid levels using the num pyramid levels property. We can increase this to detect larger displacements. In our case, the displacements are not that large, so let's set the pyramid level to 1. Let's run the code again. It looks like we haven't lost the dense fields. This is good because for lesser pyramid levels, we are obtaining similar results, which means we can set it to a smaller number to get a better performance. Let's go back to the presentation. We just talked about the fan back algorithm. It uses pyramid levels to track larger displacements. This can be controlled using the num pyramid levels property. Note also that the algorithm has a filter size property that can be increased to make the algorithm more robust to noise. Please refer to the documentation link in the resources section to get a full list of parameters for this algorithm. Recall that farm back is also a dense flow algorithm, which means it also processes the entire image leading to accurate fields but higher computation time. The other kind of optical flow method is the sparse flow method. Lucas Canale is a sparse flow method that also solves for the optical flow constraint equation. If we have two image frames, the Lucas Canale method uses a custom filter to calculate the spatial gradients and a difference filter to compute the temporal gradient. After this, the method divides the results into smaller sections to obtain the optical flow vectors. Since it operates only on sections of images, this results in faster computations, although sometimes this could lead to less accurate results. We can implement this in the computer vision system toolbox using the optical flow LK object. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how we can do this. In the script we developed, let's comment the optical flow by farm back method. Instead, we will create the object using the Lucas Canary algorithm with optical flow LK object. Let's run the script. 
we can see the motion estimation boat is moving to the right first notice the detected tree line if we record the runtime of this code using tick-tock commands, we can see that this method performs faster compared to both the dense flow methods, namely the horn shrunk and farm back. Refer to the provided MATLAB code file opticalflowrunTime.m to compare the runtimes of the different algorithms. Let's go back to the script. The only property we can tune for the Lucas Canada method is the noise threshold. Let's access this using the dot notation. By increasing this, we can be more selective of the detected motion and potentially decrease the effect of noise. Note that higher values might result in the algorithm filtering out even valid motion. The default value is 0.0039. In our case, let's set the noise threshold to a higher value, 0.01. Let's run the code again. We can see the slightly thinner but more defined field. The noise seems reduced. We can see less motion detected based on the movement of the water. The base Lucas Canadia method uses a difference filter for the temporal gradient, which is simple and hence results in faster computations. Let's go back to the presentation. We talked about the Lucas Canary method. We also talked about the only property to tune here, the noise threshold. This can be increased to reduce noise effects. A variation of the Lucas Canary method is the Lucas Canary derivative of Gaussian method. This is similar to the Lucas Canary method in the case that it solves for the optical flow constraint equation in sections. It is different in the nature that it uses different filters to compute the spatial and temporal gradients. It uses a Gaussian and a derivative of Gaussian filter to compute the spatial derivatives and a derivative of Gaussian filter to compute the temporal derivative. This leads to operating the base Lucas Canary method with better noise rejection. This can be implemented in the computer vision system toolbox using the optical flow LKDOG object. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how this works. In the script we developed, let's comment the optical flow by Lucas Canade method. Instead, we will create the object using the Lucas Canade derivative of Gaussian algorithm with the optical flow LKDOG object. This algorithm also has a noise threshold property and let's set it to the same value as the base Lucas Canary method. Let's run the script. We only see black images here. This is because the Lucas Canary derivative of Gaussian method lets us operate on the Lucas Canary method with a smaller noise threshold because of more configurable filters in the algorithm. Let's go back to the script. The default value for the noise threshold is 0.0039. In our case, let's set the noise threshold to something smaller, let's say 1e-4. Let's run the code again. We can see the slightly thinner tree line. We can also see the buoys. We can see that the boat is first moving towards the right and then it is moving towards the left. Note that we have not talked about all the properties applicable for each of the algorithms discussed here. We can use the properties command on any of these objects to get a full list of all the properties supported by the algorithm. Let's go back to the command prompt here. So here we can say properties of our optical flow object to see all the properties associated with this particular algorithm. Let's go back to the presentation. We talked about the Lucas Canary derivative of Gaussian method. We talked about the noise threshold property similar to the base Lucas Canary method which can be increased to reduce noise effects. The filters in this method can be configured using the image filter sigma and the gradient filter sigma parameters. 
This makes the algorithm more robust to noise. It also lets us operate on the base Lucas Canada method with a reduced noise threshold. In summary, we talked about four different optical flow methods. Han Shunk and Fan Back are the dense methods, and the two variations of the Lucas Canadia method are sparse methods. Fan Back and the Lucas Canadia derivative of Gaussian method have the ability to configure filters, which makes them more robust to noise. Fan Back method is designed to track large displacements. So for low frame rate applications that result in large displacement between consecutive frames, this might be useful. Note that the Lucas Canada methods are not good at this because they are sparse methods operating only on image sections and could lose large displacements because of this. With respect to the computation speed, the sparse methods are generally better than the dense methods. Especially, the Lucas Canada method with the difference filter is the simplest and thereby the fastest algorithm. Note that all the algorithms have their corresponding properties to tune, and we did not cover all the properties in this video. Please refer to the links in the resources section to get more information about the properties for all these algorithms. In summary, we talked about how we perceive motion and how to estimate motion using optical flow with three different algorithms. This concludes this video.